wildebeest. And wilde the wildebeest showed a sort of display of its lack of intelligence, if you would like to call it that, because it sat alarm calling at the warthog for I don't know how long, even though the warthog is absolutely no threat whatsoever. I think it just saw that backlit hare walking through the grass and, well, thought that it might be a predator and therefore decided it was going to alarm call and cause massive panic amongst the entire grouping of animals that we have here. All the water buck had to shoot upright and stare in that direction. All the impalas bolted upright and the rest of them all realized it was a warthog. It didn't alarm call at all, but, well, the wildebeest, unfortunately, not so intelligent. Now, what's quite nice is there's two male impalas actually busy grooming themselves right on the right of the herd, Craig. I don't know if you can see them there. There we go, those two there. And it's quite nice to watch. So with these impalas, it's one of the few sort of traits that they have that is quite unique to them is that they allo groom one another. So you won't find this that commonly in a lot of the other antelope species where two males will groom each other. You can see they're using those comb-like teeth just to run through the fur and make sure that the coat is in perfect condition, especially in areas that are hard to reach. With impalas, you can't really groom your own jawline. And so this other male with his sort of teeth that are quite elastic in the gums and those ridges will be combing through and just getting rid of any loose fur as well as any parasites that could potentially be there. And it's quite a cool little photo, well, screenshot actually of the two of them together. Now it's a much older male with a younger male. So you can see the rut is starting to slow down now. So Amanda, you want, you're wondering if they break up into groups or if they stay together throughout their lives. Now, I, I suppose you, well, I hope that you're talking about the impalas. And well, Amanda, they have quite an interesting sort of social structure. They are a herd animal and they'll spend most of their time sort of moving around in herds. But the herds will vary quite a lot depending on the time of the year. So now that we've kind of just finished the rut, so we've just finished that period where the males are chasing females around because the females have come into heat you'll find that the herds become quite mixed and you'll find males females all kind of mixed in together we'll then start going towards the lambing season and you'll find that the herds will then break up a little bit as the females have their lambs they go off have the lamb and then they come in and so the herd changes slightly and then we go into sort of april may next year when the rut starts and then most of these young males that you are seeing in this herd will be pushed out by a big dominant male he's not going to tolerate the fact that there's younger males here he's going to push most of them away and you'll find that there'll be a single male with smaller groups of females that he's able to section off for himself to then mate with so the herd structure does change so they definitely don't stay together for their lifetime it's not like the elephants that form this sort of herd that is very tightly knit and tightly bound together it's a little bit different to mix and match and break off and form small groupings quite a lot of the time isn't it just such a peaceful scene with all these animals just going about their day and everyone seems very relaxed now it's almost like now that there's so many different animals out here everyone's kind of relying on each other to spread something and any that would even try to get involved here would have a very tough time. There's so many eyes, ears and noses it's going to be almost impossible for a predator to sneak up onto any of them. So Ash, one, you want to know why some of the horns are more curved than others? Well that's a sign of age. So there we go. That male there is an adult big dominant male one of the sort of bigger males he's he's probably about three and a half years old and so his horns have grown out and they start to curve as they grow this male in front that's grooming on the left hand side that's only about he must be about a year two years old now so well not just under two years and he'll be two years in november around that time so his horns are still developed still growing so those are the young adolescent horns and they as they get older this curve then starts to develop and so that's why you're seeing different sort of lengths they get the more deep that curve becomes and the sort of the wider the spread is between the actual horn structure 